You're listening to Searching for More, a podcast of the Diocese of Arlington. On this episode, Father Ubald, a Roman Catholic priest in the Sayangug Diocese of southeastern Rwanda for 25 years, talks about reconciliation and forgiveness as the path to peace. I want now, okay, to go on preaching, but I can't preach when you are living hypocrisy and lie. No, we have to be converted. Your Father Ubald talk about his extensive loss of family and parishioners during the genocide and the lessons his experience in true forgiveness offer each of us. This episode's host is Billy Atwell, Chief Communications Officer of the Catholic Diocese of Arlington. Father Ubald, thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you so much also to invite me. And I also want to welcome uh, our, our guest Benoit, who's going to be helping with any translation we might need. Father's English is a lot better than my French, but yeah, if, if we need the translation, <laughs> we've got Benoit here. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> yeah, us. You're welcome. So, Father... Um, I am very grateful that you're here. I've read about your story, and I, I've, I've heard and read a lot about you know the Rwandan genocide, but you've got a past powerful story from within that tragedy that I think is very helpful for people to understand kind of the human impact mm-hmm. that um, something like that uh, would have. And obviously, it's a powerful message of reconciliation and forgiveness. Um, here in America, a lot of people have, have seen Hotel Rwanda, and they heard some of the stories, and they saw some of the BBC reports and things about the Rwandan genocide. Mm-hmm. Um, but they haven't seen personal stories like yours very often, so we're so grateful that you would come and share that with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get into it, there's so there's there's so, the, the tragedy that we know about. There's many good things about Rwanda too. And, and first, I would ask, what are some of the things that you you love and appreciate most about your home country of Rwanda? What I appreciate in my country. Yeah, like what do you when you think of the good things? What are the good things that you think of? Yeah, very good things is people first. <laughs> yeah, people and also the the landscape because they they say it is a country of thousand mountains, thousand mountains. Wow. Everywhere you are, you are looking at mountains. It is it is a, a beautiful country. Mm-hmm. We have volcanoes. We have. Uh, uh, it is a country recognized also uh, by having uh, uh, gorillas, gorillas. Mountain, mountain gorillas. Oh, okay. People are coming from everywhere to, oh. to, to to look at gorillas. Do researchers come and, and learn about the gorillas and, and study them? I have uh, been to to look at them many times with visitors. Wow, uh, they are very interesting, really. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. So, um, some of the, the 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 kind of the pretext to the Rwandan genocide was a genocide that happened in Burundi because I think it, it helps us understand the the Hutus and the Tutsis. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, a genocide in the 1970s, mm-hmm. and then uh, some in the 1980s. Um, in Burundi, um, and then obviously 1993, also there was a genocide against the Hutus, whereas the previous uh, mm-hmm. genocides had been against um, the, the, the Hutus. Um, how much in Rwanda in the 90s was the experiences in, in Burundi known? Was that something that everybody knew and understood? Well, I can't uh, speak at about uh, Rwanda. Mm-hmm. But in Burundi, I have no no idea. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but Rwanda, I know because I am Rwanda. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what the cultural groups, if if there was a knowledge of what mm-hmm. happened to those groups mm-hmm. in the in the other countries. And um, before colonization, to be Hutu or Tutsi, it, it was not a problem because it was a social level. Mm. When you were rich. You were Tutsi. Okay. And when you less, uh, <laughs> you, you, you were, um, you, you became poor, mm-hmm. you were Hutu. It okay. was social level. And it is amazing, before colonization, to be rich, because we had no money, to be rich meant to have many cows. Oh. If you had more than 10 cows, you were Tutsi. Okay. If you uh, you you lost your your cows by different reasons, right? Okay. When you have if you you had no more cows, you became Hutu. Mm. People were moving from Hutu River to Tutsi River, from Tutsi River to Hutu River. But the problems we have had 
began with colonization. Right. And they they divided really us because um, they said, when they uh, arrived, they said, okay, how many cows have you? Hey, 10. Okay, you are Tutsi. From, uh, well, how, how many cows have you? Less than 10, for example. You are, you are, you are Hutu. So you could see brothers from the same father, the same ma- mother. One is Tutsi, and then another is Hutu. Wow. And when they created that, first they collaborated with Tutsi because they said, if we collaborate with Tutsi, because they are powerful, we can manage the society. Yeah, so they could manipulate society by yeah. controlling the Tutsis. Yeah. And then the Tutsi have, be, have been collabor- collaborators. And when, uh, because they wanted to, uh, to, to be helped, people from Tutsi uh, level have been allowed to study, to learn. Okay. And they were so smart. And when time to claim independence came, arrived, those who were intelligent, who have studied, they began to cry, to, to scream and say, no, we, di- we must have independence or so. And then the Belgians who were uh, ruling the, uh, the country because they, 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 uh, uh, they were taking um, care of the country. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, because you, ah, you are claiming, you, 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 you want independence. You make us problems. If it is so, they change the camp. They said, we are going to collaborate with people from Hutu River because we don't make a problem. And they have already identified people as Hutu, Tutsi forever. When you were Tutsi, because it has been identified, like your children were Tutsi, uh, your children also were Hutu, they created ethnicity. But it was not so uh, at the beginning. So before the Belgians, there wasn't Hutu and Tutsis? They were, but they were. it was not a problem yeah. because you were moving. Gotcha. You, you, tro- you, you, you worked so, so yeah. hard to have many cows and then you were, immediately you were recognized right. by, because also you were giving uh, uh, some works to, 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 to people who, who right. want also from you to, to get cows. So it, it was, was like that. Was there respect between the, the cultures before the Belgians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. when, when you, you you got more cows. Automatically, you were Tutsi yeah. because you were shared with right, those. Right, right, right. That is socio, socio problems. Yeah. And, um, and then they began to manipulate yeah. the, pop, the, the people. They said, oh, Tutsi have been ruled on you. They, they created in, in kind of uh, hatred. Yeah. And then, of course, they, we, we got independence, but they have already created hatred between uh, Hutu and Tutsi because they said Tutsi have, uh, uh, has, have, have been so bad to, 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 to you, saying to people from Hutu mm-hmm. uh, ethnic because they had already created ethnic. And then we got independence people from Hutu ethnic, because they had created ethnicity, people claiming to be Hutu, chasing people from Tutsi ethnic. And then they have been refugees in Uganda, in Congo, in Burundi, right. in the country, countries around. And after 30 years of refuge abroad, they, they have said people who have who have left the the country when the country got independence. They said no, we are abroad, but we are not Ugandans or Congolese. We are Rwandans. Our the children said our parents have been victim of violence and they 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 took refuge, but we have to go back 
because we have a country. We can't be refugees forever. And then they said, you have to, to try to, 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 to let us come in peacefully. Mm -hmm. Those who were ruling Rwandans, Rwanda country, because uh, they were Hutu, they said, no, the country is so small. You have no any lands. Stay there. Stay where you are. You are. Perhaps you can. They, they can recognize you as uh, Congolese, as uh, Ugandans, but you have no any place here in Rwanda. And they said, "No, we are Rwandans." And these are Hutus that are saying it, it was Hutu who, who, yeah. who was ruling the country. Yeah. And then they, they created a, a rebellion, RPF. Right, right. And they, they fought. When fighting, the, the Tutsi who were living in, 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 in the country, they said, if you go on fighting, you, of course, you can win, but no Tutsi will be surviving. So they planned genocide. Yeah. And unfortunately, they, 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 when they, they, make, they made genocide, they were thinking that RPF will, will stop fighting. But they made genocide. The RPF fought and won the war. Yeah. And many Hutu also have been, uh, took refuge outside. Yeah. And when they arrived outside, they planned to come again. It was once more the, 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 the war. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we have worked for unity. Yeah. Because we, 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 and I, so my, um, I have been really engaged in helping people. It was my conviction. I said, no, we have to, as Christians, to raise our voice yeah. and to help people to forgive one another and ask for, to ask for, for forgiveness. It is at that we shall stop with violence. And, uh, and uh, when I began, many people, <laughs> even from Tutsi Efni, because I, I am a survivor of, um, um, of the genocide, right. they didn't understand me. They said, no, because they, they, they said, no, you are betraying us. <laughs> you are betraying us. Why to forgive? Even some priests said, oh, no, but it is so soon to speak at about forgiveness. But I said, no, Jesus, we, we, forgiveness we have. Uh, learned that from J Jesus at the cross. He died saying, forgive mm. them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. And we must really uh, speak at about the forgiveness. And finally, they, they have realized that it is a new weapon. It is my conviction. Forgiveness, it is a new weapon which helps to fight and stop violence forever. Yeah. And it's a really remarkable story because <laughs> you're talking about a country where 70% of the Tutsis mm -hmm. were killed during the genocide. I mean, mm -hmm. they say between half a million and a million mm -hmm. people one, were one killed. One million, 74 yeah. people. Yeah. It's, 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 amazing. Have been killed. That's, it's It's remarkable. And the other thing is, too, a lot of genocides, like throughout the world, throughout history, when um, people would be killed in a genocide, it was usually an invading force that would then leave. But in Rwanda, it was neighbors. It was people yeah. that you worked oh with and would see on the street. And so when the genocide was over, everyone yeah. went back home mm -hmm. and, well, not everybody, obviously there were still refugees, but people went home and you would still see the person that killed your family. I mean, that's a remarkable story for forgiveness. When you were working with families in Rwanda who were struggling say, I can't forgive that person. They killed my family. They killed mm -hmm. my spouse mm -hmm. or my yeah. children. How would you, it, it, what would you say to people? <laughs> it is a little hard, yeah? Because uh, genocide has been so bad because really it was your neighbors who were tracking you. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. You, you, they knew how many children you had. They killed you, they killed your wife, but they, 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 were, they also 
knew how many children you, 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 you had. They say, oh, how many children uh, uh, with this, that man? We have cheated this one, even, but uh, it, it stays one or two. Where are they? And then they knew who were your friends. And they, they went and searched because they knew that your friend who to, could hide them. So it was, uh, it was difficult to escape huh? because um, it was, uh, you were tracked track by, by your neighbors. And then to help them, huh? to help them to, um, to forgive, I organized spiritual retreats as a priest. Spiritual retreats. And um, first, I organized a retreat for victims of genocide. Many of those who had made genocide were out of prison. They came back because they, in prison, they said those who ask for, for forgiveness and they write to ask for, for forgiveness. To, they write, recognizing that they have been involved in genocide, they can be free. So some of them write, uh, uh, wrote. Mm -hmm. And when they wrote, saying, OK, I recognize that I have been involved in genocide. I am so sorry. And then they said, OK, because you are so sorry, go back. And when they arrived at their village, People have been traumatized. Right. Makes because sense. if you, you see someone who has killed you, you are relatives, and they came to me, it was in the morning. After the mass of the morning, they came to, to see me and said, Father, we are so afraid. Those who made genocide, who killed our relatives, now they are, they, this evening, they arrived out of jail. And I said to them, Okay, come and, and share with me what, because we, they were so traumatized. Right. And I, I asked them, okay, I'm going to help you. I began to organize retreats. I invited first the survivors of genocide. We have had a retreat with them. And I used um, chapter. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 21. Um, don't let evil uh, conquer you, but conquer evil by good one. Don't, mm. uh, don't uh, ac accept, uh, okay, uh, don't re accept a revenge, but try to conquer evil by doing good one and being merciful to each other, it, I said it to them, because we learn that from Jesus. Jesus at the cross forgave. And I tried to convince the survivors to, to pardon, because we learned, we learned that from Jesus. And I said to them, I am also a survivor of genocide. And already I had forgiven the killer of my mom, the murderer of my mom, and I have forgiven him in jail because he, he said to me, after listening to you preaching here in jail, I am here, I killed your mother. And I said, okay, I didn't know him, but of course I cried, but I went to him and I gave him a hug. I said, in the name of Jesus, I forgive you. Because we must, we must preach by example or so. And when I arrived at home, I started thinking. And I said, does that man realize that I forgave him sincerely? And I needed to, to show mercy to him. Occasion, occurred, I met 
met someone saying, oh, I, f I met the, the, the son of uh, the murderer of your, your mom. He was crying because he was without um, money to pay a scholarship. And he was crying to everyone, saying, oh, they chase me, they expel me out of class because I have no money, and what shall I do? Because the, ma the mom died when the father was in jail. And when I learned that, I said, okay, now occasion occurred. I am going to take care of that son. I pay his scholarship because his mom died and the father is in jail, it will be occasion to show to that, uh, that uh, man that I have really forgiven him sincerely. I did that. And after one year, the sister or so was in high school. The same problem because they had no money. And I learned that the aunt who was taking care of those children because she was a poor man, um, a poor woman. She called me and saying, Father Ubar, you have helped us with the, the son, but the daughter also succeeded for a secondary school. Can you help us also with the daughter? Oh, it made me really joy because now I remarked that they were no more uh, guilty because they, they they trusted in me. They didn't have shame anymore. Yeah, yeah they have no any shame. Uh, that is the shame. right way to yeah. shame. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I have once more money. I go on. Uh, I take care of her or so. Uh, people were thinking that it, it was a kind of uh, manipulation. Mm. But when they saw that I went on paying high schools and then uh, universities, studies or so, they said, no, no, but it is so serious, even in universities. And the young man is now a builder. He can make his life. But the sister, the daughter, ah, made me some much, many difficulties because after high school, she came laughing and she said, Father, look, I have succeeded well and I want to become medical doctor. Medical doctor. Medical doctor studies are so expensive. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's good, but it's expensive. Right? <laughs> but because I have, I have accepted to help, I said, okay, I will try. And last February, she has been medical doctor. Oh. After many years of, of studies, my God, I am so happy. And when I was uh, helping my people at the parish, they were at that time, they were in high school. But I said, it is what I am doing. We must triumph. The, the good one must triumph over the bad one. And they said, really, Father Obad, this is so serious. We, if we want to stop with violence, we have to, to forgive and being merciful because we learn that from Jesus. Otherwise, we are no more Christians. Some agreed. Some we agreed. It is like that. that I, mm. I, I, I have helped them because I showed to them that they were, when you don't forgive, it is like you are carrying a, a great a load. Hmm? A great load, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, no, forgive if you, are, you want to become free. Yeah. Also, if you don't ask for, for forgiveness, you are carrying a load. They have understood. And then after that uh, retreat for victims of genocide, I invited, but I asked them a question. Of course, they have killed you, your relatives, your parents, your wives, your children. Do you want or so to kill them? After preaching to them, they said, no, no, we are Christians. We don't want, we can't kill them, but they have, they have not to, to kill us once more. Because if they come, 
Perhaps they, they will kill us because they, they don't want uh, any survival because we know what they have done. We, they said, we don't want to kill them. We don't want them to be killed because we are Christians. But also they must stop killing. I said, okay. They were worried that they weren't sincere, that they were yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I invited uh, the, the, the killers or so, those, those who made genocide for a retreat. I used, the, I used the same word. Don't let the bad one triumph over you, but triumph the, the bad one by doing good one. Also after preaching to them, they realized that it, is, it was only the, 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 the right way to stop violence, to forgive and to ask for forgiveness or so. They agreed with me. And then after that, I invited. I wanted to invite the survivors and the victims for a retreat together. But I have been a little with fear because I said, if they are together, perhaps evil spirit can make that they can fight when preaching to them. Right, right. And then I said, my God, no. the survivors, they, have, they survived the genocide because there are some who, too, who, help, who have helped them. So I said, okay, now I am going to organize a retreat of survivors, those who made genocide, but also those who helped the victims to survive. Because those who helped the survivors to, 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 to survive, they were Hutu, so they will be moderators. I, I said, no, they can't fight because they will see that those who have helped them to survive are who to end, they will be with them. I invited them. It was a Sunday. And I invited the survivors to come um, in front. When they arrived, I said to those who helped them to, to, to escape genocide to come and to stand next to them. You had to come and stand next to that one you helped to survive, to escape. So I was seeing one Tutsi survived. And next to him, it was five or seven Hutu who participated. It was not so easy to, to help someone to escape. And was, when I was asking that one who survived what happens, he was saying, smiling, these are those who have helped me. They, part, they worked together to, to help me to survive. And everyone was saying, oh, these also worked it together to, 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 so I could be uh, uh, survived. And finally, I asked to those who killed, who participated in, in the genocide, I said to them, look here, these have helped Tutsi to survive instead of killing them. But they, are, they were also Hutu. Do you see? Yeah. The lesson was so, so understood. I saw them crying because they realized that they are some who were Hutu who instead of killing, they helped to escape. And then I asked, these are good Christians. We have preached gospel, but you didn't understand, but these have understood. And I want now, okay, to go on preaching, but I can't preach 
when you are living hypocrisy and lie. No, you, we have to be converted. And then I asked survivors this question. There are people who are saying that people from Hutu ethnic are bad. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with those who are saying people from Hutu ethnic are all bad ones? Do you agree with that? They said, no, no, no. All people from Hutu ethnic are not bad. This one next to us have helped us to escape. It was what I wanted to help them not to globalize. Globalization yeah. is so bad. Yeah, it's almost like a form of racism, you know, between Hutus and Tutsis on, along cultural lines, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. that, and it, so it seems like that, that helped heal some of the division between people who were Hutus and, and Tutsis. Almost brought it back to pre-colonization where it was, you know, you, you know, th there wasn't these these conflicts between them necessarily, at least for the people that you were working I, with. I have not understood where it helped me. So, ce qui dit en fait, c'est que c'est comme si, en faisant ça, c'est comme une forme de racisme entre les deux ethnies, mais le fait de les avoir amenés tout ensemble, c'est comme si tu revenais à ce que c'était avant la colonisation. Oh, oui, yeah, exactement. So, uh, I have helped them to realize that to be Hutu or Tutsi is not a bad one. Yeah. But uh, to, to live ethnicity, to live ethnicity is a bad one. Yeah. yeah, we're dealing with that in this country. I mean, this is this is a universal challenge of people saying there's differences between people based on race or culture mm -hmm. as being something that's you know better or worse, and and that's mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. it, it's a human um, uh, problem, right? It's not something specific to Africa, not specific to Rwanda. It's something every culture, unfortunately, deals with at some point. That people that look a certain way or of a certain status are seen as bad guys, and others are seen as good guys. And uh, if I have uh, to, to help people, people are so good. Because when God created man, the man was a good one, created at his image, but it is problem of evil. People don't realize that evil is at work. Mm -hmm. You are a good one. You are a good one. But when evil uh, is there, it is evil which makes confusion. Yeah. Over, otherwise, my conviction is everyone is a good one because you are created at God's image. But when evil when evil <laughs> is there, it creates yeah. confusion. I was telling my children, you're a good kid that made a bad choice. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> like you're, you're good, but you made a bad decision. And let's fix that. You know, that's sometimes we have to remember that even as adults, you know, we need the lessons of children to, to kind of set us on a good path. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my conviction really is that everyone is a good one, but we have really to let Jesus Mm. having place in our life. Yeah. I have helped so my people because I was helping them to be honest with Jesus. You are Christian or not? If you hate your brother, your sister, in faith, you are no more Christian for me. You have to, cho to choose. And because I was preaching by example, they agreed. So I saw, it is written in my book, uh, those who want to learn more, I have mm. written a book, uh, Forgiveness Makes You Free. Absolutely. Uh, they can read it. Um, I, by preaching about forgiveness and by witnessing, there is a daughter whose name was Donata, after listening to me, she said, my father is in jail. I recognize that he has been involved in a genocide and made that lady, the lady, the lady is um, Bernadette. He made Bernadette widow. As father Ubald, has taken care of the children whose father 
has chilled. His mother, me too, I go and live with that widow because if she is alone, it is because of my father. My father chilled her husband and children. Donata went and lived with the widow, Bernadette. Bernadette was with a boy who escaped genocide and he was a soldier. When um, the soldier came and visit the mom, he has been surprised to meet Donata, whose father had killed his father and made mom widow. First he was angry, but the mom said, no, don't be angry. It is the father who killed your father, but not her. She's a good one. She's taking care of me. Do you want her? So I die. Because if she was not here, I could, be, I could die. She's helping me. She's uh, taking care of me. And then the soldier, because Donata was protected by mom, he said, okay, but he did not understand. But I had said, no, try to be merciful to one another. It is like that which you will change the society. Donata was so careful to, to the soldier. He was taking care of, of him. And that every time uh, the soldier from the camp was calling the mom. The mom said, oh, my son, don't worry. I am well with the, the young daughter. Don't worry. Don't have any, any worry about me. I am so well. And that every time he was visiting the mom, mom was so happy. He was full of joy because she, she, she didn't she didn't to, um, feel any, any loudness mm. because she was with someone. Do you know what happened? The soldier fell in love. The soldier fell in love. And then he said, I make decision. I shall get married with Donata because... It is the father who killed my father, but not her. I made the decision. I make the decision. This daughter will never leave our family. Wow. Oh, and when I have uh, learned that I was full of joy, it was the success of gospel. Hmm? Mm. And I said, okay, I, I, I will bless your wedding. And many people were saying, no, it is not possible. How? That young man can can live with the daughter whose father has killed his father. But he encouraged them. They got married. They are now with three good children. How wonderful. I have been so happy and I made a decision to become godfather of the the the, the eldest. He was a son, and I said, okay, it is consolation for me. You have helped me really to change the society. I become godfather of, this, of your son. And oh, that's a wonderful oh story. Uh, and the last three, last, uh, last, uh, last year, in August, at the Assumption, uh, I, uh, that son has got the first communion. I have been there and after the mass I have accompanied my son at home it was really feast and the, the killer the, the father-in-law the father-in-law was there also at the feast because he has been out of jail no. wow. Her, his daughter has worked so much for reconciliation the two families are living peacefully. That is a, that is a, a success of the gospel, as yeah, you exactly, said. It. That's exactly. That's a beautiful exactly. thing. So, uh, in violence, in violence, 
in every violence, the priest must be involved mm -hmm. because they have the key to stop violence. That's true. Yeah, because we learn that from Jesus. When yeah. he rose from death, he came to the disciples where they were full of fear. But he said to them, the peace be with you. As priest, we have the key to stop violence and to make peace because we learn that from Jesus. Mm. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, you made me think of this. You know, some people will, will, I think, naturally wonder: the people who committed the violence were was there um, were there trials? You know, were any of those people tried in, in court? Because obviously, that's going to have some impact on on the reconciliation process and so on. Were there like the uh, the genocidaires, the people that coordinated the genocide? Um, were any of them, you know, tried and put in prison? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, without justice, you can't manage society. Mm -hmm. right. After violence, there are some who have been in a, in a jail. But there were so many, you could not, I know. You, you could not uh, judge them uh, yeah. according to the. the, the, the uh, tu ne pouvais pas les juger d'après la loi en général. You couldn't judge them according to the law and following the law strictly because there are so many of them. Right. C'est cette année que il a été organisé ce qu'on appelle gachacha. So so what was organized was called gachacha. And uh, uh, c'était en fait. Uh, culturellement avant la colonisation. Quand before, before the colonisation. Quand il y avait problème, on s'assoyait ensemble au village. When there was an issue culturally, you would just sit down together in a village. Et, 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 on essayait de discuter sur le problème et on trouvait solution. And people would try and speak together and try to find a solution together and yeah. discussing. Et, et c'est ainsi que le coupable était puni au village. So the person who was guilty was punished by the village. It was a commune, Interesting. communal thing. Et, et c'est ce que on a fait. That's what we, we've done. Et pour juger au, au prix de de, 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 de 3 millions qui avaient été et, et to judge in, in the vicinity of 3 million people who were involved in the genocide et, et, yeah. et, si on a tué à peu près 1 million 74 000 personnes so, et, so a million uh, et, a million 74,000 people died by the genocide et, so pour tuer aussi un grand nombre, un aussi grand nombre, ils ont été nombreux pour pouvoir. To kill that many people, there were many, many more involved to make that happen. Right. I I know for those listening, there's a Netflix documentary, World's Most Wanted. Then Felicia and Kabuga was a financier and a businessman in Rwanda mm -hmm. who was just recently this year captured in mm -hmm. Paris. And I know that that's an interesting documentary because it shows the coordination of how the radio stations played a, a role, but also the financing of literally like the machetes and things. I mean, mm -hmm. it, was, it's a, it, was a, it was a fascinating mm -hmm. um, examination of, we, uh, of the justice side of it, which never really happened, but that's... But, but like you said, justice is insatiable, right? You could never in a situation like this have total justice, mm -hmm. but mercy is abundant. Mercy is generous. And mm -hmm. by looking first for forgiveness, you always need justice, obviously, but by having forgiveness, you're mm -hmm. that's how you repair a society. Mm -hmm. Justice would not be able to provide that. Yeah, no, 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 respecter vraiment la justice parce que sans justice, on ne peut pas construire une société sans justice. Yeah, we cannot conceive and build a society without justice. Right. Si on ne on on ne juge pas surtout les planificateurs, si on ne juge pas surtout les planificateurs, le génocide. So if we were not go after the people who planned that at the high level, then the genocide can be repeated again. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah. I know that's been a story in a, um, a lot of Africa is the same people would commit the genocides in different countries. They would just mm -hmm. be, they would flee to the next one and start there. En fait, en fait, il y avait aussi d'autres génocides qui n'avaient pas dont on n'avait pas parlé par exemple quand mon papa a été tué quand j'avais quand j'avais sept ans. So there are other genocides that took place but were never talked about. Her, uh, my father, father's father, was killed when he was seven years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Et, mais comme il y avait impunité, 
Et c'est ainsi qu'ils ont cru que même en faisant le, le dernier génocide de 94, ça pouvait rester impuni. Mais parce que ce n'était pas un juge, personne n'était puni pour ça, ils pensaient peut-être qu'on avait une grande chance de succéder en 94 quand le génocide mm. right, and... yeah. est mais, mais parce que maintenant il y a eu la justice, on pense que ça ne se reproduira plus. Mais maintenant que la justice a été faite, nous pensons que ça ne sera pas répété de nouveau. Et avec le nouveau, le nouveau gouvernement, Vraiment, ils ont beaucoup travaillé pour l'unité. Et le nouveau gouvernement really work hard for unity in the country. That's wonderful. Et, 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 on ne parle plus de Hutu de Tutsi, on parle plutôt de Rwandais. We don't talk about Hutu or Tutsi, we talk about Rwandais. Good. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Father, I'm so grateful for your time. I want everyone listening. Uh, Forgiveness makes you free is the name of the book that Father Ubald mm -hmm. has authored. You can find it at fatherubald.com. That's F R U B A L D. Dot com. You can also sign up for his email list there and, and, and receive all kinds of good things there. The book's also available at Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble's website. It's on Kindle. You can find the book anywhere you buy books. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to go and find that book. I also ask you, please pray for Father Ubald. This is a wonderful ministry that is not just good for Rwandans. This message of forgiveness is important for all of us in our personal lives and every country. There is a need for forgiveness that, that often isn't the message that penetrates through, but your, mm -hmm. your story is undeniably powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing it you with us. You are welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for so to have invited me. Anytime. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Thank you. You're listening to Searching for More. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a review on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Also, make sure you follow the Diocese and the Arlington Catholic Herald on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channels for regular videos that inspire, educate, and inform about the Catholic faith in our diocesan community.